John and Jim with you. Sean Lewis, head coach of the Aztecs, joining us off the top of the show. There's a lot to get into here today. We've got a really good show lined up for you over the next three hours. Coach, your first Mountain West Media Days. First of all, thanks for hopping on, and how have the yeah. last 24 hours or so been for you? Guys, it's been great to visit with you. It's been yeah. awesome, uh, you know, getting out here. Obviously, this is a first-class event and, and done the right way and really, really uh, excited to be a part of it. So for you, you know, obviously being a head coach previously and now your second stint as a head coach, d does it feel at all different having this opportunity with San Diego State, having gone through it with Kent State? Like, is there – Obviously, there's a familiarity. What's it like from your perspective doing it now for a second time back as head coach? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the familiarity of it, as you alluded to, right, you kind of know what to expect. It's just yeah. each each one of these media days, there's there's a little bit of quirks and a little bit of differences, right, that each conference yeah. does put their own spin on it. You know, I didn't realize that I would be, uh, you know, doing a little bit of karaoke and a little bit <laughs> oh, of, really? um, you know, drawing and, and uh, testing my artistic <laughs> abilities throughout the course of the day. But, you know, we, we adapted and, and we overcame with all of it, but it's been a lot of fun and, uh, you know, it's been it's been great to be bragging about obviously you know our tremendous program our, our great university and, and all the fine young men that we get to lead you know first couple months here at san diego state going through spring practice and having the showcase as you did a couple months ago how would you characterize and summarize your first couple months here at san diego with uh, the new players you brought in and how they look uh, on the field. Yeah, I mean, I've been very pleased with the work that the kids have been doing, right, in the in the job of the staff to to build the relationships within the building. You know, and where we are, it's been a very productive summer conditioning and still, you know, welcoming in some some new players, obviously, that we brought in post-spring as well. And so, you know, as you watch the team move now and we're able to, you know, have some interactions with them and everything, feel good about, you know, the collection of individuals that we have and excited about, you know, the, the whole month of August that we get to really come together, become a team, you know, and attack that works so that we can be whole we can be complete um you know as we move forward and, and attack the season the right way sean lewis with us aztecs head coach here from circa mountain west media days continuing on john and jim san diego sports 760 rosters are you know massive you have so many scholarship student athletes but everyone always wants to talk about the quarterback especially <laughs> sure. when you're an offensive always. coach yeah, for sure <laughs> and an innovator um, obviously, we're, you're, you haven't named a quarterback. Right. You'll play August 31st. How do you anticipate it plays out? Will you will you name it in the in the week leading up to the game? Will it be weeks ahead of the game, or yeah. how do you and your staff anticipate it plays out in the weeks ahead? Yeah, I mean, I would like to do it as early in the camp as possible. You know, I don't have a sure set date in mind, but obviously, every single rep that you take, you know. They're, they're all limited and they're all valuable, mm -hmm. right? So you want a cohesion in the group of guys who are going to, you know, be playing the most snaps together throughout the course of the year, you know, operating together with all of that, right? And so, you know, you, you want to make sure that, okay, hey, if this guy's ultimately going to be our starter and he's separated, you know, I'm not going to say, all right, well, hey, we got to wait to announce that and play some sort of game, you know, or gamesmanship to hold it like, hey, like the, the most important thing is is doing what's best for our team and letting our guys know, okay, hey, you know, this is going to be the guy and having those reps then be allocated properly so that the units can work cohesively together and, and be able to do the work that's, that's required to win at the level that we all expect to, you know, week in and week out. How is that room specifically, not not just at San Diego State, whether it was your time in Colorado or at Kent State, because it's a unique position. Other positions in football, multiple players play right. often, right? Yeah. And you switch, you know, from one down to the next across, you know, most positions in football, not necessarily a quarterback, the right. adage being two quarterbacks, you don't have any <laughs> quarterback. Right. So yeah. how it, does that dichotomy and relationship play out with a quarterback room? Yeah, I think it's one of the unique things that makes it, you know, in my opinion, the the most special and most important position in all sports, mm -hmm. right? Because obviously there's one guy that has so much ownership and, and leadership responsibility that's on his plate, right? But there is the dynamic of the room to where if I'm the backup quarterback, I know I'm one snap away, yeah. right? And, and that the expectations and the standards for how we want to operate and what's going to happen aren't going to dip if I go in, right? So it's collectively, you guys need to work together in that room to help elevate everyone, right? And then have the co competitive maturity to know and understand okay hey there is only going to be one guy you know that that takes these snaps that takes a significant and the majority of the snaps to to impact the team but that can't disrupt or become a distraction for the club with the way those guys interact within the room and that's where you know the, the room as a whole is really really strong they're really really close knit in the leadership of coach johnson to to bring those guys together you know has been second to none and even though they're all fierce competitors you know shoot when you see them you know in the room interacting with one another you would think that they're best friends as well which is awesome yeah. right which is what you want to have they're pushing and challenging one another competing at a really high level right but then they're not doing anything to you know stab each other in the back, whatever yeah. the case mm -hmm. might be, right? 
No, that's that's a great relationship to have. Do you care about preseason polls, or is that like uh, I don't. whatever? It, yeah. It's whatever, right? Yeah. Like, it's one of the phrases that you know the kids will hear me say, and you guys will hear me say a bunch. It doesn't matter. We got to get better, yeah. right? And so you know, <laughs> like, hey, we're picked eighth. All right, doesn't matter. Got to get better, right? Like right. we'll sit here, you know. Hopefully, in years to come, we'll be picked first. Hey, doesn't matter. Got to get better, right? right? And as we move through it all, it, it's. I, it's it's one data point of what people think, and some people need external motivation. Uh, I'm not one of those individuals, but we'll make sure our guys know about it. They were probably they probably knew about it before I did. Oh, yeah, and I'm sure. sure some guys probably yeah. already got up in their lockers to, sure. to go. And yeah. you know, away we go. We'll we'll use all that fuel to the fire as we need be. Yeah, I was gonna say, is it is it motivational? We we talk about whether it's the San Diego Padres, and there's things that play out over 162, and there's like perceived slights, and yeah. hey, this team's pitching up and into this player, and then all sure. of a sudden this player. Like, is that a type of thing that plays out over the course of a season? If there is something written or said, you can use it as a motivational tactic. Yeah, I think you're always yeah. looking for yep. what, you know, what's going to get your team going. Yeah. Right? What's To me, mindset's so important, right? Focus is so important, right? So what is at our disposal that's real, that's tangible, mm -hmm. that – that can, you know, help get our guys' minds right and locked in and focused on the things that are important, right? And so if we can use any data point that happens yeah. to, to come out or any quote that happens yep. to come out, and it's going to have a positive influence to, to lock us in, and to get our minds right, and to refocus us on the things that are critically important. If we can pull from something on that and, and, and kind of pull on that thread and shape that narrative yeah. as we move through a week, like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'll lean on that for sure. You know, a locker room <laughs> dynamics with leaders and who you know players look towards on the team with so many new players here transfers yeah. recruits everything how does those how do those things work out do they just like play out over time or do you have a couple players in mind that you might talk to like hey maybe you need to step up and I'd like to see this from you or how does that whole work out? Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, it's twofold, right? Some of it happens organically to where naturally guys are going to do the work at a certain level, the lifting, the running, the extra study, the practice where because they have the credibility by how they're doing their work, others naturally gravitate towards them. Right. Mm -hmm. But we've also identified a group of guys with, you know, within the club that, you know, ha have kind of formed our leadership committee by what we've done through winter conditioning and through spring ball. And so we've been meeting regularly, with them through the summer to help grow them as leaders as well because it's just not as natural um, or as comfortable as maybe as it once was, you know, for guys to be vocal and for guys to step up and to know that they're empowered to do so, especially with the changeover and everything that we've gone through. Yeah. So, you know, we've kind of identified guys in each of the different position groups, right, that we're going to lean on heavily and equipping them with tools and empowering them to be a little bit more vocal, right, to be more intentional, to be more purposeful so that, everything that we've been talking about since day one becomes theirs and that it is led by the players and that it's player driven. And it's not something that they're just renting from us as a staff, but it's something that they wholeheartedly believe as they do this work. And as we move through this critical phase of training camp that we're about to embark upon. Getting underway in just a couple of weeks yeah. on the Mesa, San yeah. Diego State's head coach, Sean Lewis with us right now, John and Jim, San Diego sports 760 for Mountain West media day at Circa in Las Vegas. So yesterday we had the pleasure to speak with some of the student athletes from yeah. San Diego state to Sean McEwen was here jude wolf as well uh, what do they exemplify specifically i mean you got to sean who's a veteran player has played at tcu now second year at san diego state jude wolf a lot of football in the pac-12 at sc coming here what, what do you hope to see and what have they exemplified in your time with them so far yeah i mean they've just lived our standards of what we've asked them to do since day one right they, 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 they've bought into our ideology our belief system and through their actions not just their words right they're 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 living testimonies of what we want the locker room to become right and, and they're guys that we know are going to need to be impactful players and then to show up you know day in and day out the way that they have and then week in and week out every single game day to to be impactful players and to have a very very significant impact you know in a in a great direction for us as we move forward is it hard for you to take any type of break i feel like yeah. <laughs> you are go 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 24 7 which is a great quality yeah right but is there any part of you that is just like I'm going to take a little bit of break. Or are you constantly just like, I got to work, work, work? I mean, it's a, you talk about that dichotomy of the quarterback room, right? There, there's that balance as well, right? To be able to carve out the time to to rest and recharge so that you can have the energy that you need to, to pour into your guys. So yeah, I, I'm intentional. Uh, I probably, yeah. my wife would tell you that I should probably take a little <laughs> bit more time than right. I do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I need to be very purposeful about it. I need to put it on the calendar. I need to tell Mads up front, like, hey, this is family time and, yeah. you know, block it off so that, you know, I can protect that um and and again do what i need to do to recharge my batteries and, and just be able to kind of turn off 
for a minute, right? Yeah. Because you always got to be on. You're always building the program. You're always creating relationships. You're always, you know, the really the you know the 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 figurehead of the university in a lot of ways within the public, right? And so to be able to have that downtime and unplug, you know, and get back to neutral is important. And you mentioned like intentional because if you're not the first one out there, then how are you going to set example and lead if you are, you know, not showing it? to everybody sure actually speak louder than words right? absolutely absolutely yeah. yeah i mean you know i had a great mentor at one point in time we we're having a conversation and at one point in time he was one of the youngest uh basketball coaches in the country right mm. and so at the time i was the youngest you know head football coach in the country yeah. and you know i was doing probably more than i should yeah. and got pretty burnt out right oh, he yeah. gave me this great analogy he's like look man like you know you're the you're the core energy system of your whole organization, right? And you got all these people that are depending upon you to give them energy because that's what great leaders do. It's an energy transfer business, right? And he's like, if if you die, right, if, if your energy is so low that you can't give, then what's going to happen to everyone else that's dependent upon you? Right. you know, and you sit there and you think about it. And it's like, well, well, the shoot, everyone else is going to, you know, kind of perish as well in this, you know, yeah. uh, analogy with it all. He's like, right. He's like, so he's like, it's counterintuitive because, you want to be so selfless and you want to give as much as you can. He's like, you got to prioritize that time for yourself so that your energy can stay up so that you can continue to give when needed for everyone else so that everyone can flourish and grow within the organization. Sean Lewis with us right now, home of the Aztec San Diego Sports 760. As you go out, like you said, establish relationships, build your program. Yeah. You know, San Diego State has so many things to offer. Obviously, location in Southern California, you, you can get "quote unquote" bounce back players that you know are from Southern California. You can recruit, obviously, throughout the state. One of the great recruiting hotbeds yeah. in, in college football. What does San Diego State afford you that is maybe unique if you were elsewhere around the country in the Group of Five? What does San Diego State present? I, I think the one thing that is uniquely specific to San Diego State is the great city of San Diego, mm-hmm. right? To where you know the the young men that we're recruiting at at any level. Now, whether it's high school, junior college, or or transfer, right? They're they're acutely aware of growing as a whole person, not just as a player, and creating as many opportunities for life after football than just football, right? Mm-hmm. Football is a major, major priority. And obviously, they want to grow in that space as well, but they're also looking for development in their life skills. And so having you know, the city of San Diego and being able to showcase that, the relationships that we have, the 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 Aztecs for life that with are within our community that are running hundred million dollar corporations, right? And being able to set up internships and shadow shifts, that is something that, you know, some of these smaller college towns they literally can't offer it. It's something that they can't compete with that we can. So as these families and prospects are going through, okay, just the facts of what they're looking for, what's important in their recruitment process and where they're going to select for their future home. We're able to tick off all those boxes and all those marks because of the first class city that we have the first class, you know, uh, degree in education that we're going to be able to afford them. And uh, it's, it's really, really impactful. You'll probably know where we're going to go here after I ask this question, but (laughs) during your introductory press conference, you mentioned a story about how you won over a recruit playing Madden. Can you can you dive more into that? Because yeah. I know you didn't really talk about it much during the press conference. There's all this stuff happening. Sure. It's whirlwind. But like, sure. How did that all come about? What yeah. teams were did you use? And I need to know like the details of this recruiting thing. Yeah, I mean, so you know, as you as you're going through the recruitment process with every single kid, right? They're all uniquely different. Uh-huh. And and this young man, you know, really enjoyed gaming. Yeah. And so every time, like, I'd reach out, like, hey, you know, you want to get on a call, or you got a second? He's like, yeah, let me just finish this game, coach. I'll hit you back. Or the kids would be like, yeah. all right, cool. And so you know, as as we were developing our relationship, there was this friendly banter that ensued and we're like, Hey, if we jump on the sticks, man. Like I'm going to kick your butt. Yeah, all right, you know? all right, yeah. and, and so the competitive nature came out. And so when the kid got on campus for the very first time, you know, we, he came to my office and I had the game set up, you know, and it was like the, you know, the, the Madden you yeah, know, yeah. homepage basically. Right. And uh, you know, he's like, coach, you weren't playing. I'm like, no, man. Like we mean what we say and we say what we mean. Like here's let's the stuff. Like let's yes. go. You know, so we didn't end up playing a full game. It was just a half and uh, you know, came out on top. And I don't know if that directly led to the commitment, but I uh-huh. think again, just ways that we could be authentically true to ourselves yeah. and having, you know, my eight year old son, like he's into gaming and the gaming was a big part of, you know, my life growing up. And I don't play obviously nearly as much as I did back then, but you know, it was a, it was a fun deal. It was a fun experience that then kind of became a part of when kids came to campus, yeah. right? Like because all these young men, especially the high school prospects, they're so well connected. Yeah. Right? They're like, Hey, like, 
you go to campus with Coach Lou, like he's going to jump on the sticks with you, right? Yeah. These guys are bragging about like what good Fortnite players they were and everything. It's like, all right, hey, show me. And some guys lived up to their <laughs> billion. And other guys, it was like, yeah, I no, not about, about it. <laughs> so, okay, so College Football 25 is coming out. We can talk about the event coming up in Novo, Brazil, which is next week, which is super yeah. cool. I know it's yeah. free. Aztec yeah. fans getting RSVP for that right now, by the way. Yeah, going to be go, a great event. GoAztecs.com. It's an amazing uh, facility, Novo, Brazil, uh, Brazil, and Mission Valley as well. So how excited is your eight-year-old? Your yeah. son's got to be through the roof with this game. I mean, his dad's head yeah. coach at San Diego State. Yeah. I know the players are thrilled, but is there anyone yeah. more excited than your, your son for this? I mean, it, I, he's excited, but I don't, you know, like, if you haven't played the game in the past, gotcha, I right. think there's a That's different a level, a right? Yeah. Like, this was a so decade like, ago. Yeah, was yeah. You know, yeah. So, I mean, like, yeah. it's almost like, I think, like, kind of our generation yeah, exactly. right? yeah. who played, yes. you know, shoot, a decade ago, it's, it's yeah. been, what, 11 years or whatever it's been yep. since the new one's been released, mm-hmm. you know, like, my little guy's like, oh, it's another football game. I'm like, no, 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 like, no, no. You don't no. understand, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, so he he's thrilled about that just because Dad's excited to buy him another game, right? right. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, man, it, it's going to be a lot of fun, and to have the event, um, you know, is it, going to be awesome as well to engage. What's interesting? So Sean Lewis isn't in the game, right? Coaches are not in the game. You can I don't create a coach. So. Oh, you can, okay. create a coach. So, yeah. But yeah. the student athletes. We talked to Jude Wolf yesterday. I think a big topic oh, for he was, he was like happy. he wasn't in the game. He's like I'm kind of here to be in the game. No, yeah. but he was saying he said yeah. I'm going to call up EA Sports. I'll play for free yeah. to be in the game. Um, so let's talk about the event coming up next Thursday yeah. at Novo Brazil Brewing in Mission Valley. I know there's prizes, a launch event, opportunity to play. Yeah. I'm sure your student athletes are excited. What do you expect yeah. for, from that next week? Yeah, again, I think it's you know a, a great opportunity to get your hands on the game early, right? And the chance to you know shoot compete with some of the guys who are going to actually be in the game, right? right? And again, like we have just such tremendous tremendous young men and tremendous people there within our organization. You know, it's really just an opportunity, right, to for our fan base to be able to engage with them more, to to really get to know who they are, you know, beyond, again, just the, the player that they see on Saturdays in the fall, but to see the, the high caliber of young men that they are, um, you know, and again, see a little bit of their competitive nature and a chance to win some prizes, have some fun at a great family establishment. It's like, come on out. What, what, what's not to love? And it's going to be a great evening, a great opportunity. So when Sean Lewis plays at San Diego uh, State on the video yeah. game, who, who's his quarterback? <laughs> <laughs> Whoever he is got plugged yeah, yeah, in there right away. There we go. Right? There we go. I tried, but uh, <laughs> can't get by Sean Lewis with that one. <laughs> All right. So this is uh, next Thursday, 4 to 730, Novo Brazil, Mission Valley. By the way, you can RSVP. GoAztecs.com backslash EA Sports. It's yep. free. GoAztecs.com backslash EA Sports. Coach, before you go, Aztec Link, name, image, and likeness. It's so yep. topical, obviously, in college athletics. What role is Aztec Link playing? What do you want our listeners and Aztec fans to know about the importance of name, image, and likeness on your program? Yeah, guys, obviously, you know, NIL is critically important, and the work that the Aztec Link Collective is doing, right, is is offering all the opportunities for our kids to really fully maximize the the opportunity here on the Mesa. So need all the support. Um, you know, I know everyone's, hey, you're asking for tickets, you're asking for this, you're asking to <laughs> yeah. donate, you're asking out for collective. Like, yeah, we are. Like, this is the competitive space that we're in, and this is going to be the vehicle that is going to allow us to do all the things that everyone wants to do and for us to have pride in the program to be able to put a wall up around southern california and to identify you know those those high school players that are going to be the mainstay of our recruitment to be able to develop them and then hold on to them and to retain them during their process and during their journey while they're with us on the mesa so all your support is is welcome and greatly greatly appreciated from you know one dollar ten dollars a hundred dollars whatever it might be you know support the aztecs through aztec link and uh, we're truly grateful for all you guys support aztec Link.com. How is Blenders real quick? You guys were over at Blenders. Was we were over cool at Blenders. Experience? Yeah, really cool experience. We got some cool stuff that's coming down the pipes from uh, from Blenders that we'll okay. be hopefully making an announcement here in the next couple of weeks where be another opportunity for uh, the fan base to be able to support and, uh, cool. you know, look great in the process as well yeah. through Blenders. Okay, look we good, like feel it. good, play good. That's, that's it. That's exactly <laughs> right. AztecLink.com. Sean Lewis, our pleasure. Great to see yeah. you. We're guys, excited. Thank you. For fall camp. We'll see you back at the Mesa. Thanks for taking time for, for us. Sure. Thanks, awesome, coach. guys. Thank you. Go Aztecs. All right. Head coach of the Aztecs, Sean Lewis, will react on the other side. We're in Vegas at Circa. Do not go anywhere with you until 6 p.m. on John and Jim.